Ever pondered the difference between dead tank and live tank CTs? Well, today we're diving deep into the world of current transformers or CTs to unravel this intriguing conundrum. Current transformers are classified into two types based on their construction. Dead tank and live tank. Now, those terms may sound a bit ominous, but they're actually quite straightforward. Dead and live refer to the potential of the secondary windings and core. Dead tank signifies that the potential of the CT's tank is at earth potential, that is, zero. The classification of a CT, whether it's dead tank or live tank, depends on the location of the core and secondary winding. If these are situated in the dead tank, you've got a dead tank type CT. Conversely, if they are located in the live tank, it's a live tank type CT. Now, you might be asking, which type should be used and what are their pros and cons? The choice of CT type really depends on the requirement, but most commonly the live tank CT is the go-to option. Let's start with live tank CTs. In this type, the core and secondary winding are housed in the top tank, which is, as the name suggests, live or at high voltage. The core and secondary winding are insulated against this high voltage. The application of insulation over wound cores is relatively straightforward and the insulation is robust and reliable. One significant advantage of live tank CTs is their compact and economical design. The primary winding is of the shortest possible length, meaning heat generation. During short time, thermal current is minimized. The heat dissipation is quick as the primary copper is directly in contact with transformer oil. Plus, as the length of primary inside the CT is less, the heat produced in the primary will also be less. Now, let's consider dead tank CTs. In this case, the core and secondary winding are housed in the bottom tank, which is earthed or dead. The primary winding is brought down to the bottom tank and insulated from the earthed tank and cores. This design, however, presents a challenge as it's difficult to apply the predefined insulation over the primary because it needs to pass through the wound cores. Dead tank CTs have their drawbacks. They're bulky and costly and the longer length of the primary conductor produces maximum mechanical force during short time dynamic current, which could potentially damage the insulation. Heat generation during short time thermal current is also at its maximum. In summary, live tank CTs are compact, economical, and generate less heat due to their shorter primary winding. They're also easier to insulate and have a better transient performance. On the other hand, dead tank CTs are bulkier, pricier, and generate more heat. They're also harder to insulate and are potentially more prone to insulation damage due to mechanical forces. So next time you're faced with a choice between dead tank and live tank CTs, you'll know exactly what to consider. Thanks for joining us today. If you found this video informative, please like and share it to help us spread the knowledge. We are always creating new content, so subscribe for more electrical engineering insights. And if you have any questions about CTs, leave a comment below and we'll do our best to answer them.